so I have this fun little uh, example for you guys. Illustration. Illustrations. Illustrations. Everybody loves them. Okay. So, here we go. This is good stuff. This is water. Agua. Alright. This is a flat soda. <laughs> because it sat out during junior high club. Um, if it was bubbly soda, which one would you choose right now? Water. 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 Okay, all you health nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Soda. 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 I'm not gonna tell you, imagine your favorite soda. Oh, okay. okay. Project soda, okay? You say that. Yeah. Why do you want why would you rather drink soda? It's sweet and tasty. Sweet and tasty. I'll, I'm not much of a soda drinker, but when I come home, um, I if I'm really thirsty, I love a glass of sweet tea. That's what I want. Absolutely. Okay. So if I have the choice between water and sweet tea, absolutely sweet tea, right? But here's the thing. You can look this up. Tea, soda, actually dehydrates you. So for every sip of soda or every sip of tea that you take, every sip of coffee that you have, you really need to drink two more sips of water. Because your body needs water to survive, right? Okay, you have the choice to make every day. You can choose water or soda. This will make you break out and cramp when you go running. This will <laughs> help you have a clearer face and be, like, refreshing, okay? Your choice every day. You want one forever. Yeah, one forever, okay? So here we go. God creates Adam. From Adam, God creates Eve, right? Okay? Uh, just because that was the only really clear cuts we have in that. Sorry. Okay, let's budget. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's curved. Okay. Awesome. Okay, God creates Adam and Eve, and he says they are created in the image of God. Come, let us make man in our image. Okay? So a little bit. Because they continue to walk with God. Right? Daily. And then God says you have a choice to choose me. You can't see it, but on, you might be able to. It says sin because this dehydrates you. This is not a good choice. Right? But they choose it. Whoa. And when they choose it. Whoa. Eve sin first. <laughs> there you go. However, we'll not get into the details of this. We'll stay, we'll stay surface level here, okay? Alright. Adam and Eve, both sinful now, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Adam and Eve are gonna have three kids, at least that we know of. Um when they have those kids, those kids are born sinful. Cain and Abel, for example, okay? What, what do we know about Cain? Cain he killed Abel. First murder. Awesome, right? Sin right off the bat. Okay? All because, all because God liked Abel's sacrifice better. Like it was a silly, stupid sibling rivalry that Abel died over. Sin. It's guys, it's it's a real thing. Here's a lot of the times what we think is that we're not born sinful. We think that we learn sin. So let me show you something. Get my other cup out here. Here's a cup labeled humanity, because you're all in high school, you can understand that word, meaning everybody sits Adam and Eve, right? Okay, everybody else, all right? So Adam and Eve have kids. Sin plus sin just equals more sin, right? Doesn't equal perfection, doesn't equal clarity, equals more sin, right? So guys, we've... Again, the one point I am driving home tonight is the fact that you are born sinful, that you continually do struggle with sin, and you will struggle with sin, even if you are a believer. Every day, every moment you get the choice to either choose God or to choose sin path. And something that has been rocking my world is I'm going through a study in Romans right now. And so um, Romans 1 Paul just like lists out sins. And he's like, look, if you do any of these things, sinner. Okay, so we're going to look at it. Because I was convicted. Um, so here are some of the things. Greeting, evil. Um, girls, you all fall in this category. You all know. Um, we, just, I, we just are mean sometimes just to be straight mean. It's bad. Okay? Uh, bad talk, right? Talk is not glorifying to God. Uh, jealousy, 
Envy? Anybody ever wanted something else you don't have? Okay. Murder. This is not just action, it's thought. Even thoughts of hate. That is huge. Okay. Have you ever lied? Ever gossiped? Um, haters of God? Been arrogant? Boastful? Prideful? Inventors of evil? I was this way. I have a younger sister. And I could be like, hey, Kelsey, you should go do this. And she'd go do it. And my parents were like, Kelsey, why'd you do that? And she was like, Kayla told me to. Uh, this is funny. I love how like Paul goes through the list in Romans, and then he gets down to this one. If you've been disobedient to your parents, sinner. Anybody perfectly ever obeyed their parents? Absolutely not. Untrustworthy. If you can't be counted on, that's a sin. Unloving, unmerciful. And even if if you were to get through all these things and say, no, I'm none of this. If you're somebody who even allows someone to do any of those things, you're a part of it. You're, you're guilty as charged. Pretty crazy, right? So... Y'all are going to know the answer to this because, again, pretty basic, but what's the consequence for our sin, for our choice? Death, right? Every single one of us. God said, you eat of this tree, you will surely die, right? So, guys, that's what we get. We get death. That's what we deserve to pay. Every single one of us has a birthday, and unless Jesus returns before this time, you will all have a death date. You will have two dates on your tombstone. You'll have your birthday, the day you die, and a dash in the middle. It's pretty sobering. Your life is so short. And yet God says that he wants more for you. John 10.10 10 says that I have come, Jesus, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. And y'all, that is the only way you can have life, is through Jesus Christ. It's the only way that your sin won't be a part of your identity anymore, won't be a part of your DNA. It's through life in Christ. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your mouth that you confess and are justified, it is with your heart that you believe in our state. It's that simple. John's trying to get us back to the basics of going, it is not all of these things. You don't have to know all of the answers to the theological questions. It's not about that. Your salvation is not about that. Your salvation is all about you understanding who you are. And who you are is a sinner. And your need for a Savior. So that you can be a, a, a sanctified, which is a big word, a set apart person who is aware of their sin but being made alive in Christ. But guys, like I said when I started, if you don't understand how you're a sinner or that you struggle, then you won't understand grace. So that's my prayer for you guys. Then my prayer this week is that you would start to understand your sin. Because for the longest time I didn't understand my sin. And maybe your sin is like mine was, so hidden at the heart. It was not blatantly out there, and I couldn't see it for years. But I guarantee you, you fall into that list somewhere. So that's my prayer for you guys, is the Lord shows you where you're at. Not because I want you to feel like, oh, I'm the worst person ever, like, woe is me. No, that's not the point of this. The point is to set you up for next week so that you understand the sweetness of salvation. So, I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll keep going for night. Lord God, I thank you for every single one of these students that sits in this room. God, I just pray over them, Lord, that you would reveal to them who they are. God, who they are in the light of you. God, you are so holy, and we are so not. God, I pray that if any of us are making ourselves our own gods in any way, Lord, if it's in pride, if it's in control, I pray you would show us that. I pray you would, you would take that away from us. And Lord, I pray that if, if any of these students don't have a personal relationship with you, God, and they want to know life abundantly in you, God, I pray that they would confess with their mouth 
believe in their heart that they need you. God, you say that um, when we trust in you, that we become a new creation. God, that you, the old is gone and the new has come, and the new is you. God, the new is holiness, that is not perfection, that is being made righteous. Lord, that is so much sweeter. God, please protect them and guide these students as they go about their week this next week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.